So let's talk about basic uh, AM modulation. And the idea is we've got some signal in the time domain, and we're going to multiply it by a carrier. And um, it's pretty intuitive just to see this is the waveform um, that you get out. So from the time domain, uh, this is pretty intuitive. But as we talked about in the previous module, um, going from the time to the frequency involves a little bit of understanding the Fourier transform and what happens when we do this multiplication in the time domain. I should point out that in RF systems we're often looking at symbols, symbols like this and you need to know whether you're looking at a time or a frequency as a signal coming in. Let me just make this as a F here. And what do I mean by that? I mean oftentimes you'll have a box and you'll have an arrow and you'll have this and you'll have another box and an arrow and this is multiplication in the time domain and you just have to remember that even though you could be looking at the spectrum of that and the spectrum of that we're always talking about multiplication in the time domain by this it's called a mixer but you may have already known that so let's look at what happens in the frequency domain. Uh, so if you remember from last time we talked about the carrier, well here's the Fourier transform of a cosine of omega t. And so the question is what does the frequency domain of um, this signal look like? And multiplication in the time domain corresponds to convolution in the frequency domain. And you'll notice here this is not a mistake. This is not multiplication or the dot we sometimes have multiplication it is a convolution with this little asterisk here so because we're multiplying in the time domain we need to convolve in the frequency domain and what that's going to do qualitatively is it's going to take this um, baseband signal which is the spectrum of this envelope here right and it's going to place it on top of the two carriers I'm just gonna take a minute to review convolution because I think it's uh, just an important thing that you remember um, where it comes from and also how to do it um, most of what we're gonna do in wireless systems is this simple take the baseband and pluck it on top of two Delta functions but let's just go over it real quick so here is the convolution of two signals in the frequency domain. And you'll notice I'm back to omega. Uh, remember, we can go from omega to f. It doesn't matter. And what you're doing is, let's just take an example of two signals. And I'm going to draw a box here. This is omega. This is x of omega. And then I'll draw here. Um, triangle this is y of omega okay so what we're gonna do is we have this dummy variable that we're integrating over and so if you recall what we do is we actually take the two signals and we're going to multiply them so I'm going to multiply this signal by the top signal and it is shifted by an amount, eta. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sweep eta as eta moves, and so this will slowly move along. And I'm just going to do an example right here. What this integral does is it actually calculates the area overlap, the product of these two, calculates the area and then it plots for that value of eta we'll call this um, eta naught for eta naught it plots a single point which represents the multiplication of those two integrated over the entire area and then we'll end up with a convolution that will look something like this so that's just a reminder and if um, in the in RF, all of our signals are generally symmetric um, just for the sake of completeness. If Y of omega had looked like this, 
you'll notice that omega's here and eta's shifted. And so what we do is we actually would take this and flip it. And so it would be x of omega. And this we would walk in this way. And that flip happens because of um, what's inside of these parentheses. So this is just kind of reminding you the integral. Um, what I want to do is do a short video where I show you two examples so you can see qualitatively how we do this. All right, now that we've gone over uh, convolution, um, we can go back to um, uh, our uh, amplitude modulation, if you will. And um, what we have here is just an example of, let's say our spectrum was a little bit more complicated. And if we multiply it by cosine, um, all we do is we just take this, just like before, and the center at 0 is going to go right here and it's actually going to go also right here on the negative but if we just look at the positive here's the center so this was the center that's right there and we've got what we call an upper side band and a lower side band and this is all positive frequency so if you're wondering why am I showing this it's because this piece that for the original signal was the negative side, the e to the minus j omega t. This was the uh, image, if you will, of our signal here that's required for it to be real. When we do the multiplication, that actually gets up converted into the positive frequency space. So now we have these two signals. And if I were to plot this complete spectrum, just erase these real quick, and I were to extend this, we would have here in the negative. So we end up with four copies, where here we only had two. And that's because each one of these gets a copy of what's there. So this is just a brief definition of a lower sideband and upper sideband, and it has to do with this uh, center frequency when we do up conversions. I want to talk finally just about what happens when there's a DC component at our baseband frequency. And this is something that actually happens a lot in radios. And if we multiply that in the time domain by our cosine, we take all of this and we're going to drop it right on top of each one of these delta functions. And what we're going to end up with is this. It's going to end up right there. And we end up with the carrier. So not only are we transmitting the signal, both the upper and the lower sidebands of the signal, um, we're also transmitting the carrier. And the reason uh, why we care about this is the carrier, as I mentioned before, doesn't carry, forgive me, uh, information. And therefore, um, we're wasting power by transmitting it. And so you might say, well, let's just not do this. And that's a great idea, but it turns out that oftentimes, um, even though we don't like it, there are uh, reasons why there's a little bit of a DC signal, and so we end up with uh, a little bit of a carrier here. Um, it becomes a little bit of a problem. And uh, this is actually the basics of, um, of AM uh, types of modulation. And so uh, there's a couple different things of AM modulation that we'll talk about in the next module. Um, you can do double sideband, double sideband suppressed carrier, single sideband. Uh, these are all different architectures. And I'll just go back here. Um, actually, I'll just show you right here just as a... All right, so uh, here's some variations that we can do for AM. Uh, some variations of the architectures are double sideband, double sideband suppressed carrier, single sideband. And uh, I just want to touch on something um, quickly here. Um, go back to this slide. Um, and I showed you that we're going to have four copies of this, right? How many copies do we need to recreate the original signal? We only need two, right? So I could have this one and this one and get my signal just fine. I don't need these extra pieces. And so uh, one of the things we'll learn about in AM is that 
uh, we can transmit both sidebands or we can just transmit one of those sidebands to save energy and we'll talk more about that in the next module and like I said before the reason to choose different AM architectures is based upon power bandwidth system complexity and perhaps other design trade-offs <laughs>